Good evening, everyone. Calexico City Council, Calexico Redevelopment Successor Agency, Calexico Financing Authority, regular session agenda 630. This meeting is being called to order. Roll call. Mayor Arrela Fernandez. Here. Mayor Pretend Bryson. Here. Councilmember Pacheco. Here. Councilmember Garcia. Here. Councilmember Hodge. Here. We have a quorum mayor. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance. Um, now we'll have our police chief. Will you please leave? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Vision statement. Together, we pledge to provide effective and efficient services in a courteous and respectful manner to improve the quality of life for all in our unique order community, Viva Calisica. I will do it. Dear Lord, bless this meeting today, all those present, as well as the lives of those we will encounter afterward. Ready us to make every moment count. Strain our confidence in who you have made us to be. Set us free from comparison in order to work together efficiently. In Lord's name, amen. Amen. Nice. Okay. session announcement. Thank you, Mayor. City Council went in closed session. We did receive direction, but no reportable actions. Um, we have to report right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Approval of the agenda. Uh, Madam Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the agenda for our regular session. Uh, oh. interest in maybe moving the proclamation down to the consent calendar get from the uh, city to the city library so that was for the city council's consideration okay do we have to make make a move to Correct. make a motion do we have a motion and you would move that to item 7a hmm? do we have a motion to move the proclamation of library card sign up month september 20 to consent agenda Correct. It would be as number 7A on the consent calendar. So I'll move. Make so move, make, make, make the recommendation to move the proclamation down to 7A. I'll second, second that. Oh. Mayor Adriana yeah. Fernandez? Aye. Mayor Bertrand Aye. Councilmember Pacheco? Aye. Councilmember Garcia? Aye. Councilmember Hodge? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. We're going into presentations. Coronor Coronavirus COVID-19 update by Police Chief Gerardo and Fire Chief Diego Favela. Nice and fresh up here. <clears throat> All right, good evening, Honorable City Council. Uh, the staff members that are here today and of course like always to our customers and citizens of Calexico that are watching via our streaming options uh, before we start our presentation today on COVID-19 or just actually just an update I know it's kind of hard to keep up with all the changes with COVID-19 but I'm going to make an attempt at doing some of the, the uh, main ones but before we do that I want to give out a couple of thank yous and uh, first off is I want to say thank you to all of our city employees that we have on my behalf. Thank you for all the hard work that you guys are doing. Um, I see it on a regular basis, low staff, trying times, and yet we're still successful at, at uh, providing all the essential services. And, and for that, you guys should be commended, and I, I really appreciate that. Uh, another thank you to all the men 
and the women of the Calexico Fire Department and the Police Department. Our jobs generally are very dangerous, and especially now with the COVID-19, uh, it makes it that much more. You guys have been tested, and you guys always seem to impress me uh, with handling these calls. So for that, I say thank you, and I also want to give a thank you to their families, the families of the police officers and the firefighters. Um, I know that can be stressful for them, the uncertainties. So just the fact that you keep them happy and calm uh, lets them do their job, and at the end, it get, lets us provide a better service. So I just want to say thank you to them. I also thank you for you guys for, for allowing me to come up here and, and give this little presentation. So I'll go ahead and start off this presentation with the latest numbers. And these numbers can be found at the Imperial County Health Department website under the COVID-19 dashboard, or they're also available on our City Calexico Fire Department Facebook and our city website. So the numbers for Calexico as of, yes, as of this morning, we've had a total of 3,292 citizens that have tested positive. Active cases are at 206. And this next number is kind of where I get a little bit of comfort and a little bit of reassurance is that on the recovery, it's 2,984. As long as that number goes up, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And uh, unfortunately, we have had 102 deaths in our city. And I guess this is where my thank you comes into the public safety members because these are the type of calls that they respond to. Uh, unfortunately, almost on a daily basis, having to deal with these calls, having to see the parents, the families, uh, that takes a toll on them. So for that, I, I just want to tell you guys thank you again for that. Um, so as we continue to stabilize the situation of COVID-19 within the city and also within the county, I'm pleased to say that we're reopening businesses, obviously, and we're doing it in a phased and safe manner. So in order to phase these businesses, a new standard, or a new, actually a new statewide public health order was issued on August 28th. And I think that was our last Friday. I'm sure you guys are aware of it. If not, I'm going to tell you about it. This plan is called the California Plan for Reducing COVID-19. This plan will replace the stage concept, which started back in March 19, the beginning of it, where they had stage one, stage two A, two B. So, and they're doing this to hopefully uh, make it a little easier to understand. The data that comes in will be a, le a little easier to um, start moving along the line with these businesses, right? So the plan was to replace the stage concept program that started on March 19 with the state stay at home order. We've had several updates since then and we can probably anticipate that there'll be more after this one. So the state's latest blueprint for a safer economy, instead of the stage, it's now a tier program, okay? So what does that mean for us? So starting August 31st, which was Friday, the state assigned every county in California to this tier system based on its rate of new cases and positivity rate. So this current plan has similar goals as the stage order. However, this order gives us the framework to permit a broader range for reopening businesses safely. And I guess that's what we want to do. Open these business with good guidance and make sure we're doing it in a safe manner. So the colors that they, they instead of putting a number, they put a color to these tiers. And uh, purple is considered widespread. Red is for substantially, substantial spread. Orange is for moderate spread, and yellow is for minimal spread. And I guess our goal would be to be at a yellow, which I thought was kind of uh, nice, was the governor did not establish a green color. And his reason for that was he was not expected to return to a pre-pandemic stage anytime soon. So I would think green would probably be the best, but right now we're shooting for a yellow. <clears throat> so the Imperial County, and obviously we fall on that one, is currently in a tier one, which would be the purple one. And when I saw that, I was kind of taken back, like, man, why it's widespread, we're still at stage one, we're not doing good. But then I noticed that 38 out of the 58 counties are also in stage one. So for the most of it, we're all in stage one. But there, however, there is those counties that are not. So <clears throat> there are probably some questions out there from our business owners and asking, like, all these questions, most of our questions can be found on our city website. 
under the COVID-19 information uh, tab. You can also find these on the Imperial County website, Health Department website. And if you don't find your answer there, please give us a call at the Fire Department or City Hall and we'll help you get that. Also, if you haven't been tested or you want to be tested or you think you should be tested, uh, you can also go into our city website under the COVID-19 information and find out our testing locations. So I'm gonna leave you with these real quick reminders. Uh, stay vigil, although we are improving, we still need to stay uh, vigil, stay disciplined. Make sure you're wearing your mask in public and I hope you guys can hear me through this. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water. Keep at least six feet of physical or social distance when in the public. Limit your mixing with people that you don't live with. Clean and disinfect your frequently touched areas. Stay home if you're sick. And with that part, I'm gonna turn it over to the uh, police chief and he's going to finish up the presentation. So, uh, good evening, Honorable Council Mayor, uh, Mayor Council, Ms. Gentlemen, audience on, out there on virtual world. Um, so, mine, mine's going to be short, believe it or not. I'm not going to take a lot of time because uh, Fire Chief Favila did most of the COVID update. My update yeah, is just, uh, if, I don't know if you heard it, but we've, we've had a lot of, uh, it, recently we had deaths, we are heat-related deaths which uh, police and fire respond together all the time. Uh, we've had about two, three of them in the last week. Uh, we've had, and, and I put him, I'm putting them out there because I want people to understand that they gotta drink plenty of water, stay hydrated, uh, try to stay in cool places. Um, most, uh, actually these deaths are all people uh, that have homes, so they're not the homeless. Um, also another thing we've had and noticed an increase of, uh, in Calexico we've had, two deaths in the last week related to drug overdose. So the message out for me out there is be careful out there if you are thinking that you're buying those, what they call Zanny bars, which is uh, Xanax laced uh, brownies or uh, cookies. Uh, you don't know what you're getting. They might be putting fentanyl or Oxycontin in there or a higher dose. So for the public, uh, for your children, for friends that you think are buying them, you're not getting it from our pharmacy, so you're, you don't know what dose you're getting. So you might be getting something that's a little bit stronger, and if you mix it with alcohol, um, it, it could be deadly. So we, did, we have responded to two calls in the last week. To me, it was something that was alarming, and I spoke to my counterparts in other cities, and they've also seen an increase in overdoses. Um, so uh, I don't know if it's because of COVID or it's just a, a bad uh, batch of drugs out there. Uh, so please be careful, um, people, your children, your friends, your husbands, uh, be, be careful with that. The Collection Police Department has seen an increase in, since COVID started in the calls for service for mental health issues. Uh, the rest of the county has as well. Uh, we are currently working, I've met with uh, Imperial County Behavioral Health uh, and with the CEO, Tony Brajotis, the sheriff, and myself, to try to come up with a solution because it's taking a lot of time from us uh, to get them medically cleared and then take them to mental health. So I've met with them twice. It looks like we're coming to a, a, a solution on this. Uh, we're working together as a group trying to solve this problem. It's not unique to, to the Imperial County. It's, it's just overwhelming. Again, I think this is all a cause of COVID. Uh, people aren't going out there and exercising uh, like they used to. They're not going out. So uh, if, if you have a mental health problem, they are uh, having crisis at the time. Uh, my department right now, this coming week, uh, this month, we're taking, some of us already taking it, but the whole department will be taking crisis, uh, crisis intervention and de-escalation course. It's an eight-hour course. Uh, it's state mandated, and it's something that we need to take because of everything that's going around the world uh, and the nation. So that's something that was recommended. It's, it, it's law and everybody's gonna be taking those courses. Um, 
on their time off, uh, and it is going to cost the city some money, but not no travel time, no nothing like that. Everything is all done here at the PD. Uh, so nobody, it's not going to cost us meals, travel time, and hotels. Um, so that's all. I, if you have any questions for me regarding anything that's going on, uh, you can call me. Yes, sir. My question is, what's the formula for the number of people in, in a store per, per square footage? So there's, they're talking about 25% of what, of what your, of your capacity is. So it can be different. I mean, if right here, our, our, capa our capacity is 133. So you would say 25 at the most. Uh, so it's good. the stores are going to have to be policing themselves on that, um, and I'm pretty sure I, I, the, the the business owners they're very, being very cooperative with us. They want to open, so they'll, they'll they'll keep an eye out, you know, to make sure the you know, small store that can only hold four people, they'll have four people going. So and I'm glad they're opening. I mean, it, it it's it, it looks starting to look better now. You know, when you see people walking around downtown and, and stuff like that and, and, and doesn't look as bad as it did when it first started. Chief, to what extent are you uh, permitting uh, groups of people to get together and watch a soccer game or watch uh, the Dodgers or whatever and they open up the garage and they've got the big screen and you've got 20, 25 people, which I personally saw this weekend. So I don't know... Uh, uh, what, what steps do you so, so those those health orders are still in effect. So, I mean, you, you can't have a hundred people in a house. I mean, that's a party, and we're hoping that the people will call us. We did go and break up a party this past weekend. Um, a citation, I believe, was issued as a warning citation uh, at, a, at a house party that had probably about fifty people in there. Um, we will. I mean, if it's a family of ten people and they're social distancing, they can watch soccer. But I mean, if they're all cluttered in one. I'm hoping that somebody will call us. We'll go out there and ask them to, to leave. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's more education. Like I said, I mean, we don't want to cite, but if we have to cite, we'll cite. Uh, we will cite people. If, if, you know, we have cited people. Um, so uh, we've cited businesses, too, in the last two or three weeks. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's on them and, and, and the, on the citizens to report this type of, uh, of behavior. Might take us 30 minutes to get there. Depends if we're busy or not, but we'll get there. Thank you. Uh, one more question, probably uh, just for staff. Um, I know you talked about business towards the end. Um, what are the efforts that are being done, or have we gotten any calls from businesses reaching out to us, uh, or for us to explain what this means? All these new uh, rules, as they are uh, changes, well, not rules, but guidelines. You know, from uh, changing from uh, the tier, the colored tier which is now a little bit easier to understand and reopening again, going to stage two, I mean, high risk. Uh, is there something that is in place or have we gotten any calls or requests for assistance from any, any businesses or just public in general? Maybe printed material or something. Like that. What we're gonna be doing is the following. Um, our city clerk and our recreation manager have uh, used our city website platform and also our Facebook page platform to disseminate information. Um, the city uh, administration will be issuing a press release uh, by tomorrow uh, providing further guidance on the health order that was amended by the county public health officer. We will be doing that so we can inform all of our community what Colexico um, is looking to do. This guidance will provide uh, specifications from our municipal code in terms of some of the now allowed activities and how they will be able to be done. Um, this is also something that's being done in, in tandem with the work of our code enforcement team. Thank you. Announcements. These proceedings may be viewed on the City of Calexico website, www.calexico.ca.gov, the Friday following the City Council meeting. Public office hours with Mayor Ariola Fernandez are suspended until further notice due to coronavirus COVID-19. Public comments and public appearances. This is the time for the public to address the City Council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the City Council. 
During the current state of emergency, public comments are submitted via email by 4 p.m. deadline of September 2, 2020. Will be read aloud and entered into the record. Any comments received during or after the meeting will be distributed to the City Council and retained for the official record. The City Council is prohibited by state law from taking action or discussing items not included on the printed agenda. I will be, I'll be reading them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, this meeting is from Carla Flores. Okay. Dear Mayor and Council Members, my name is Carla Flores and I reside at 602 Emilia Drive, Calexico. I have two concerns and I hope the council and the city manager take action on my request. For the past two months, we've been seeing an increase of our homeless population roaming around our neighborhood. These homeless are hanging out behind homes on Emilia Drive in what we call the ditch bank. Not only are they hanging out, but cars are driving in and out when illegal, it's illegal to drive in there. There are also turn trash into fires. We have older adults living in the homes whom are concerned and worried. Children can't play outside at these homeless or walking around by our homes, drugged up. My neighbor last week found a pipe hidden on a corner of a fence where children play. This is uncalled for and we need that our city patrol our area more often and if possible close the area Dutch so homeless won't transition through our neighborhood. I know homeless is an ongoing issue, but they, when they start coming into our neighborhoods, causing fear to residents and children, it is not acceptable, acceptable, so I urge you to take action immediately. My second concern, I live on the corner of Grant and Emilia. If you stand five to 10 minutes, you will see that 75% of the cars don't make a complete stop or don't make a stop at all. My cousin almost got run over because a car did not make the stop going westbound on Grant. Cars coming out of Emilia also don't make a stop. If you recall, several years ago, there was a pursuit between CBP and a vehicle coming out of Emilia, crashing into a parked vehicle for not making the stop. I urge the city to put speed bumps on all three stops, stopways before a tragedy occurs. If you need for me to send a video for you to see for yourself, I'm more than happy to record it and present it to you. Thank you for the consideration of these two concerns that I brought forward. Ana Gutierrez, this is to all of the council. I am one, for one, I am tired of the same regurgitated answers this council gives out. I ask that our current city mayor is held accountable. We know this council has always been tainted and we seek to put a stop to the corruption within this council. We are a small city, but don't ever think because of our size that our voices will be drowned out. As for you, Morris Risen, I saw your quote in the Calexico Chronicle about the vandalism and protests against Mayor Rosie Arrola Fernandez, and this is what you said. It's ruthless. People around here are ruthless. I thought this thing was over with. The thing is not over. As long as the people of Calexico are unsatisfied with how the council carries itself, it will not stop. Then we have Bill Hodge, who recently felt the need to write a little something in the newspaper about bad manners. Please note that everyone who is tired of the corrupt doings of this council are millennials. That is respect disrespectful to the work and the voices of the elders in Calexico who have shown their disapproval for the council. What you call bad manners, I call individuals rightfully decrying the corruption of the very government that says its purpose is to serve the people of Calexico. I am also beyond angered as to how this council has ignored the many people who rent in the city. I'm in support of stopping the evictions indefinitely until this council has a sound plan on how the many people who rent are economically struggling with the protected and will be protected and taken care for as for current Mayor Rosie, we want her out. Okay. 
Dear City Council members, please add the following information to public comments. Mr. Figueroa, congratulations on your recent appointment as city manager for the city of Calexico, California. As a veteran administrator with 14 years of government management as well as past assistant city manager for this city, you are quite familiar with its past and current affairs and the exceptional needs of its residents. And that experience alone will benefit our city. I also hope that business will not proceed as usual and that you have the fort attitude and moral courage to favorably resolve the critical issues that impact our city, including high water rates and poor water quality, illegal trash dumping, road repairs, as well as some grievances that have been blatantly ignored by the past and current city council members. Illegal trash dumping, a most pressing issue I have previously brought to your attention several times since 2019 has been the illegal dumping of trash and dead animals by local landscapers at an empty lot on Cold Road and across from Clinton Avenue. Trash dumping activities have, new, have now expanded to include the retention basin of the same lot the south portion of all the American Canal between Barco Road and Highway 111, the empty lot located on the corner of Clinton and Hillary Streets near the CB stop, the west side of Calexico, including Cole and Cloak Roads, as well as the section of Jasper Road near the railroad tracks. In fact, these trash dumping activities have increased during the past months to the point that some people are just dumping tires, mattresses, sofas, roll of carpet, electronics, stoves, toilets, and any other trash on the side of the roads around Calexico as if the entire city was a trash dump. Trash dumping is not just an eyesore for local residents but for the visitors, but it can also but it can also lead to health problems that can easily become a fire hazard as well as evidence at least several fires have taken place in this, in this area. This is plenty of evidence that someone is getting fire to trash, is setting fire to trash and logs in the empty lot of the end of Clinton Avenue, the retention basin and long all and all along the All American Canal. I have shared my concerns regarding these issues with this count, city council and with other county officials, and the only one to respond was Mr. Eric Ortega, IID director, who was graciously helped clean up the portion of the south side of the American Canal. However, much needs to be done in this area where the people manage to access through several entrance points and continue to dump trash, vandalize, hunt, drive by roads, vehicles, and set fires with more people walking, exercising, and fishing this area, driving the hunting through should not be permitted, allowing off-road vehicles with only increase and in dust in already highly populated, polluted environment. Edwin, Edwin Lopez, dear city manager and Mr. Garcia. Sir, since you are new, I want you to investigate and report back two issues. One, what happened to the $7,000 donations collected for a tarp for the animal control? Where is the money? Where is the tarp? Please tell us other reasons other than COVID-19 why the tarp is not here. Two. Why does the chief of police allow bad information on the official website? Under animal control services, it says all unwanted pets go to the Humane Society of Imperial County, when in reality, it is not true. We are the only city that doesn't work with the Humane Society. Can this information please be deleted because it is deceiving the reality? Sir, can you please report back publicly? There, is a lot of pe there are a lot of people that want to know the answers. Mari Carmen Teran, Mr. Manager and Mr. Garcia, I went to look for my lost cat to the shelter across Grand Plaza after trying to find photos online of the animals in your custody, but couldn't find it. Why don't we have photos on the official website? There are two animal control officers. One can be in charge of it. El Centro PD posts lost pets on their Facebook page. Why can't we? At the animal control shelter, there is a sign that says animals transferred to the Humane Society, but it is not true. The sign needs to be removed or updated. Please stop lying to us. Last, why does the animal control leave so early at 3 p.m.? There are two men who, perfectly, who can perfectly work different shifts. Why aren't they doing? Our pets and us deserve better. 
or at least the same service provided at other Valley City? Why are we receiving less? Raúl Ureña, mi pregunta es, ya que el Estado aprobó protecciones, por fin, ¿cómo va a implementar la ciudad de Caléxico? ¿Cómo va a notificar todos los, a los, todos los ciudadanos? ¿Cómo van a investigar a los que ya han sido desalojados por medio o fuera de proceso de corte? ¿Ya están informados de esas protecciones o habrá otra junta informativa con nuestro abogado que nos sigue drenando tantos recursos? Jason Jung. I would like to know when, council, when the council addressed the return of Officer Luis Casillas. I would like to know when the current council will do a press release to reference to what happened to the fake FBI raid. Mr. Figueroa, I don't know if you were the one that contacted the DA's office in reference to my complaint against Lieutenant Serrano. Thank you. I hope we can pick up Sarah's report this week. Raul Ureña, and this is a message from the last meeting that was carried over. He says, I am disappointed with the city council so far. Other jurisdictions like the county use Zoom's raise hand feature or traditional phone to continue to receive verbal comments from the public. The lack of effort to set up space for voice comment is hurtful and meaningful is hurtful to the meaningful participation from disabled people and other populations in town. Please fix this so it does not look like an attack on our democracy. As evidence outside, the people will show up. The people are awake. Zinhar Manhanares. As mayor, Bill Hodge presented the weekly COVID updates without interruption. Councilwoman Rosie became mayor and the COVID updates were not released for two weeks. Mayor Rosie finally presented a COVID update on July 24th, but every week after that, Council Member Hodge has taken over the ho and hosted the weekly updates with Mayor Rosie never making an appearance. Why is Rosie so absent in the updates and not hosting as mayor? Thank you for your time. Ismael Arbizu. Hello, Council. How are you? Are you tired of working so hard? Did you find more evidence to pass the eviction moratorium? Oh wait, Governor Newsom had to step in and at least take some initiative. He can't do everything, so please be proactive and not reactive. Hello Morris, I have a question for you. Why does your political campaign say re-elect? Correct me if I'm wrong. You have never won or been elected for your position. People in the council appointed you. Is that correct? Simple yes or no question. In that case, you are lying and are putting it only in to influence those who don't know that you never won and just vote for you again in quotations. Please don't put your comment aside. This is a legitimate question and public concern and we have to address for the safety of the people. If not said to in the public announcements, I will just go ask you in person. Mr. Hodge, this is directed to Mr. Hodge and his co-workers. Why do you run to Calexico Chronicle to blabber about those that bring awareness to our local issues? How can you ex expect Facebook posts from yesterday to be your statement that you've been pushing for this and not to blame? You, are la you all lagged it. You are months late to this decision and it's barely a discussion. Hodge, talk to the people before you go to the media. This isn't Hollywood, and this will never be Hollywood. Just because you are the first city to bring it up, it doesn't make it. It doesn't make anything better. We put pressure on you all. Bad manners. You go spread rumors to the whole city to speak ill and the activism that grows through the city. What kind of leader are you? Pass the eviction moratorium. Gilberto Manzanares. As a Calexico resident, I have seen far too many of our past and present council members accumulate crimes and display inappropriate behavior. From sexual discrimination complaints to DUIs to felonies, I am disappointed and shocked at the fact that there are no background checks for council. This is a must in every single job. This city's, counts, city's council has been opposed to the idea of background checks, which is incredibly disturbing to me given the history. 
Will council consider and implement background checks this time around? I have noticed that Morris Risen's campaign signs have the word re-elect on the corner. This is a bit confusing to the general public since Morris was not elected to council. He was appointed by this council. I am aware of past campaigns Morris has run, but advertising yourself as ever being democratically elected is very misleading to the people. This is a violation of campaign laws, and does Morris intend to clarify this with the people of Calexico? He also commented that a question that needs to get asked is regarding the budget. What plans does the city have in place to prepare for the economic shortfalls that the city will place when the city doesn't receive a projected amount of property taxes? In the adopted budget for 2020-2021, you have additions to items for post-virus revenues, but no adjustment for property taxes since we have to assume 100% compliance. The city needs a plan. Ashley Diaz, Dear Rosie, Morrison, Hodge, Pacheco, and Camilo, I just want to take a second to remind you all that when the city of Calexico needed you the most, you didn't do anything to fulfill our needs. Really question if you deserve to be sitting where you are. Question if you even deserve to talk about what's best for our community when you're in in actions concerning the eviction moratorium demonstrate the opposite more than any anything question if you are fit to run for council again when clearly you are not fulfilling your job at the moment. Shame on you all. Calexico deserves better. Juan de los Santos. Hello council. I am writing this extremely disappointed in you all for not being able to step to the plate when you were needed the most. Your inability to help the renters in this town has said a lot about you all and how disconnected you have been from the community. Each and every one of you has lost my vote. The state had to come in and help us because you apparently did not have enough information in the five months that have passed. You did nothing for the people. Will any of you say anything publicly about this? Don't try to dress it up as if you helped us either because you weren't there for us. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. And thank you all for the comments. Um, now we're going into... Yes, welcome. Mayor Arroyo Fernandez, Mayor Pro Tem, Ryzen, Council Members, Gaby, Carlos, and Miguel. First of all, uh, I won't speak about the folder for a couple seconds. Two comments, non-folder related. First of all, congratulations, Miguel Figueroa. You did a wonderful job in the selection process. I, I commend you for who you chose and who you're, who's going to lead this city moving forward. I think it's an excellent choice. And uh, muchas gracias. Uh, second of all, uh, I'm not sure how aware you are or not aware. The county established a business loan stabilization fund. It, it provided 500000 in seed money uh, back, I believe, in April. The money went relatively fast, obviously. We're living in, in very hard times financially, besides our health. Uh, so the county established a second uh, funding, so there's an additional 500000 to make it a total of $1 million. Uh, we're going through the application process, but I want to make aware as everybody is, please reach out to your community business owners. Let them know this, this is available to them. It's $10,000 or up to $10,000, and it's really to assist those businesses that have been adversely affected 
by the COVID pandemic. So again, if you could help spread the word, the, the, the applications are online, County of Imperial. It's the second bullet point. Uh, I just checked it today. Uh, and again, if you could uh, help us spread the word, it'd be awesome. Going into, going into the folder, uh, Council, uh, I'm sorry, Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem, we, we attended a meeting today with obviously uh, the local CBP authority. Uh, I wasn't expecting much from the meeting, uh, but it, at least it was cooperation and dialogue. That's basically as much as we can get. They're receiving direction from DC and they're just implementing it. And unfortunately for us, from a business community, it obviously adversely affects us. Is COVID-19 front and center? Yes. But again, the border wait times are not assisting, especially from an essential worker perspective and with a lack of clarity when it comes to peak versus non-peak hours. So again, hopefully the meeting that we had today will provide more uh, clarification moving forward. The, the, the copy of the letter I provided is what the county border supervisors is requesting support from CBP, which is basically in a nutshell clarity uh, and support. And it's also a CC to our elected officials uh, Senator Kamala Harris, who is now our VP nominee, Senator Feinstein, and, uh, and Congressman Vargas. The second attachment I'm not going to touch too much upon. I think uh, Chief Avila made, uh, did a great job, and that's on the new tier system, purple, uh, red, orange, and yellow. Mm -hmm. uh, I completely agree with the green. Unfortunately, we're not going to be at green for months, maybe even a year, basically, until we get a vaccine. But again, that's just, uh, I liked it because it's very clear and concise. You can talk to your constituents. He asked you a specific question. You can use this. I believe uh, City Manager Figueroa sent uh, uh, this information along with more information related to uh, uh, where we're at from a county perspective uh, yesterday. Lastly, and, and uh, one of the primary reasons I'm here is the micro, the official word is micro, or title, micro enterprise home kitchen operation. Uh, it's Assembly Bill 626 and Assembly Bill uh, 377. The reason I bring this up and the reason I want you to be fully aware of this, uh, this, uh, um, this bill and uh, the procedures involved with it is it allows uh, the entrepreneurial small businesses or small kitchens to operate from your home. If you look at our, our economy, our finances, we're all suffering financially. This allows for people to actually register with the county who opted in. We were actually, I believe, the first county that opted in. A couple of counties have opted in with us. But again, it's very important that we understand that this is an entrepreneurial type of enterprise that people can actually operate out of their home. The, the actual uh, licensing from the county is extremely easy when you compare it to your commercial restaurant operations. Again, this is not meant to be a commercial operation. There's a limitation on daily meals. There's a limitation on weekly meals. But at the end of the day, it's an additional outlet for the people that are really suffering financially to be able to get something back uh, and provide a service to our community, obviously in a safe environment. But again, it's something that we can push at the county level, at the city level, and let the people that really need uh, an extra couple of bucks in their pocket, that this is an additional uh, avenue for them to pursue. And again, the process is relatively simple. Uh, if you would like and you want to coordinate with your city manager, we can definitely have somebody from public health, from county public health come and give a more formal presentation on the subject. But again, it's something, uh, given what we're, we're living in COVID-19 times, this is a fabulous resource for us to fully, fully employ and obviously uh, market as much as possible. I try to go as quickly as possible. I know I only have three minutes. Uh, I'm not sure if you have any questions for me. So I do have a couple of questions. So on this letter, so this is going to go out or has gone out already? That went out. Went out. Went out. Uh, went that out, went out. out. And so, again, um, go ahead. So anyway, um, I, mean, I would like to ask the council also, Madam Mayor, if we can just somehow maybe draft a letter as, as uh, uh, you know, the city that actually, in, in all the county, you know, suffers from this, but I think Calexico is by far the one that gets the, the most affected by, by whatever happens at the border. So we can just probably mimic some of this letter or language and probably send a letter from, from this council to all these um, representatives that are being um, decided on this letter. Uh, the senators to uh, also uh, Congress, uh, Congressman uh, Vargas, which I, I don't see too often here. 
So maybe we can just draft something like this coming from, from this council. Um, so that's, that's on one. And now going to, to um, this other presentation on the microenterprise, I think this is a great idea. Something that I've seen that has taken off during this time of, of COVID. I, I see on social media or people just reaching out, selling uh, food, which, you know, it, it's, a, it's a, another way to get an, some extra income. So if you can just, uh, I mean, Madam Mayor again and Council, uh, if we can just have that presentation by, by uh, you know, uh, public health, that would yeah. be helpful. And, and also just put this out there to the public. And if I may interject, find other ways to promote it. And again, if you want to coordinate with Gabby or, or Mr. Figueroa and just send me an email, I'd be happy to, to assist in the coordination efforts with uh, County Public Health. They still need to get a license and the, the county just come into your home yes. and look at your kitchen yes. and, and they, there is a process. Yes, there is a process. It's a lot more limiting in scope. Uh, yeah. You don't get those random no. type of situations. <laughs> uh, and again, the, it, the excerpt it, com, is, is pretty complete as far as what is going on, what you need to do to get things going. Mm -hmm. But again, if, if it'd probably be more appropriate to have somebody here explain in a PowerPoint presentation uh, the ins and outs of how to get it done and obviously do it in a more effective manner than I have. I agree, so just taking up on that offer. If Absolutely. You just help us out through, through, through Absolutely. staff, that would be great. Lastly, uh, it's Labor Day weekend. We, we're not out of the pandemic. Let's be careful, let's stay safe. As you mentioned, the, uh, uh, the baseball games, the football yeah. games, I mean, let's, let's be careful. We're, we're not out of this pandemic, I mean, Flu season is just around the corner, even right. though it's still 105, and that's why I tease you on the tie. Uh, we're, we're not out of this, and we're not gonna be out of this until we get a vaccine. So unless we practice uh, what uh, Chief Avila says, and I'm not gonna repeat, but at the end of the day, we need to hold ourselves responsible. That, that's the end of the day. If we, if we don't do that, then be the first to cast the first stone. Okay, thank you, stay thank safe. You. Thank, thank you, you, Supervisor Escobar. Miguel, as Mexicali informed us of the uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, Cruzada, are, are they going to be uh, uh, doing their thing again? That, that will not change until further notice. We, we still receive that letter on a weekly basis at the inspection point there as soon as we cross into Mexicali. City manager's report? No. Um, Thank you, Madam Mayor, council members, members of the community. Um, I, I do want to share with you that um, in the past weeks, I've had the opportunity to engage with some of the Colexico community based organizations on a project um, that will definitely help at risk populations. Um, from what I've been um, getting some feedback on from these groups, this has been something that has not happened in our city for a while. And I'll touch as to what this is. Back in April, uh, the city of Calexico made a request to the County of Imperial to secure 10 travel trailers. Um, as we've seen recently in the news, the County of Imperial secured, uh, if I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 39 travel trailers uh, as part of an effort through the Department of Social Services in the state of California and the Imperial County Department of Social Services to provide opportunities for at-risk population. Um, some of these trailers, as we saw, due to the unfortunate uh, incident in Island, some of these trailers were used over there and we've seen the benefit that they've brought to the community over there. So uh, in order to honor the request that the city made in April, um, I reached out to County CEO Tony Rojotas and Social Services Director Veronica Rodriguez uh, to see how we could accommodate those trailers in our city. Uh, I did an assessment uh, with my department heads. We had a couple of conversations and the city, uh, the city does not have the infrastructure, the proper hookups for these traveler trailers. However, that doesn't mean that private property in our city doesn't have the hookups. So what we did is, um, uh, thanks to my staff, we were able to bring in several organizations here in Colexico to serve our community 
to see if we could come up with a game plan for the use of these travel trailers. Throughout this process, I've been communicating with the County of Imperial. Uh, County CEO Rehotis has been receptive and has given me the opportunity to be open in terms of what populations we can serve. Uh, I'm happy to share uh, that Catholic Charities has stepped up with a viable plan uh, that they can consider for their program. The Family Resource Center, um, in addition uh, to the Calexico Neighborhood House and the Calexico Wellness Center, uh, have been the agencies that we've talked to so we can find a use for these trailers. Uh, sure, Helpline also reached out in recent days. So but my point is that one, we will not let the county down because the county stepped up to assist on the request from the city. Now it's our responsibility to make sure that we can find a use for our population um, that we deem needed here in Calexico. Uh, again, the feedback has been uh, a thank you to the city for bringing the agencies together so as a team we can find solutions and we can find the proper use for these trailers. I will keep you posted. The next step is gonna be for us to have a meeting with the County Department of Social Services so we can present as a team the concept that we feel is gonna be feasible for the use of these trailers. I'll keep you posted as we move forward with those talks with the county. I wanna bring also to the attention uh, of, of, of this council an opportunity that has surfaced uh, through the North American Development Bank, Nat Bank, on a program that they called the COVID-19 Recovery Program. Uh, this program will make uh, resources available for jurisdictions such as the city of Calexico, where um, we can actually support some infrastructure projects that may have been impacted by the pandemic. Uh, we already have a very good rapport with NatBank as a result of our work on the New River Project. Uh, so I wanna bring this to the attention of this council because again, this is another opportunity where we can potentially tap into resources if we provide a concept, a project, or a proposal that they deem feasible for potential funding. Again, we need to think and look at the opportunities that are out there. This is another one that we will definitely be following up on that just um, came to our attention. I have scheduled a meeting with representatives from NADBank uh, to look into the opportunities that the city can look um, and take advantage of through this program. I want to commend Fire Chief Avila and um, our police chief as well because um, one of the things that I requested was that they provide us a presentation report at every council meeting as they are in a way the first in line when it comes to receiving the information uh, that the county disseminates through the state of California. That way we can stay up to date with the latest happenings when it comes to the efforts that are happening here at the local level with re regards to the pandemic. Um, with that said, uh, one last thing that I'm gonna touch on is that um, as, as part of something that you probably saw in the press and that I alluded to at the last meeting with regards to my uh, plan stepping into the job here as city manager in Calexico is making sure that we take advantage of opportunities, opportunities that can benefit the community. There are some IT opportunities that I'll be more than happy to be further discussing in the near future in the form of a formal presentation uh, that I anticipate will um, benefit our community in general here in the city. Some of the low hanging fruit that we can tap into without necessarily having to expend a large amount of money from our city coffers, which as we are dealing with this pandemic right now, we're very, very careful. Uh, and I have been recommending our finance director to keep a very close eye on all expenditures as uh, we prep for the next step, which is doing an overall assessment of how our city was affected as a result of the pandemic. With that said, Madam Mayor, th that's my um, city manager's report. Okay. Moving forward. I guess I will start on my left side. Councilman Garcia. Um. Madam Mayor, uh, not to report, just to echo, uh, you know, that uh, I mean, all that the kudos to all the staff, you know, that uh, has really done a great job, you know, in spite of uh, everything that is going on with COVID and, and, and 
just, just throughout, you know, uh, I think, you know, they need to be commended. They need to be thanked. Uh, and I know that, you know, at times, maybe they don't feel that, but we really appreciate you, and the community does as well. So thank you, and uh, you know, that's, that's my comment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah, a few items. In the last two days, ladies and gentlemen, leg legislature has been passed called the COVID-19 Tenant Landlord Protection legislation, or better known as AB 3088. In essence, it states that no tenant can be evicted before February 21st, 2021, due to the COVID-19 hardship, and property owners have gotten an extension and are pr protected from foreclosure due to the economic impacts of COVID-19. Tenants are still responsible for unpaid amounts, but those unpaid amounts cannot be the basis for an eviction. Landlords may begin to recover this debt on March 1st, 2021. Now, because of AB 3088, which came about a couple of days ago, now we believe it's not necessary for Colexico to address the issue of the moratorium on evictions. The state has stepped in and would only be duplicating manners. Further details will be forthcoming. I did receive a formal memo, let me just, even if it's repeating some of the information. Uh, last night, AB 3088 took the place of AB 1436. This bill provides immediate protection for tenant and landlords. AB 3088 includes targeted protections for tenants to shield them from evictions due to COVID-19 related back rent through February 1st, 2021. Um, let me see. This also extends an anti-foreclosure protections in the homeowner bill of rights to small landlords. A little more detail. Under the legislation, no tenant can be evicted before February 2020 one as a result of the rent owed due to COVID-19 related hardships occurred between March 4th and August 31st, 2020. If the tenant provides a declaration of hardships according to the legislation's timelines. For COVID-19 related hardships that occurs between September 1st, yesterday, 2020 to January 31st, 2021, tenants must also pay at least 25% of the rent due to avoid eviction. So that's just a little more detail and uh, more information will be forthcoming. Um, I want to commend our new city manager, Figueroa, and the staff. Uh, I made a, a request, and uh, the one thing I'm noticing about our city manager is that he takes immediate action, not recklessly, but with uh, he's prudent and he's taking immediate action. So I, I thank him for uh, taking on the, uh, the little project of replacing the trash cans downtown. But it's still frustrating uh, to me uh, we got the alleys fenced in along with Republic cleaning downtown street sweepers in a more frequent basis. But the reality is that we still have the alleys littered with debris and stench has been mitigated, but it's still there. In spite of the strong leadership of Councilman Morris Risen and, and the improvements that have occurred. So my concern is what steps need to be done to reach our goal to eradicate the stench and debris from the downtown area, especially the alleys. I mean, the question is, why is it that what we have done has not solved the problem? The problem still exists. It doesn't have to be answered now if you don't care to, but uh, we can work on that. Uh, we, uh, Madam Mayor and myself, and along with City Manager Figueroa, had a 
census Zoom meeting led by Richard Ortega of Neighborhood House to continue to get the word out and complete the census questionnaire. Neighborhood House and other agencies will be having a classic car caravan in Calexico on September 17th at 6 p.m. It, it, should be, it should be a very nice caravan. And this is just to make people aware for those that have not completed the questionnaire to do so. Because I, I don't know if you know, but the federal government, uh, the Trump administration has cut off one month. Uh, we had until late October, and now it no longer exists. We only have until late September to finish the census. And just piggybacking on Supervisor Escobar's comment, Labor Day weekend, our numbers are improving. Let's continue. So please wear your mask and practice social distancing. Thank you. Mr. Reisen. Mr. Pacheco. Uh, Mr. Figueroa, there was a, a, tra uh, a fire by the uh, trailer that was, uh, used to be the, used to house the uh, PAL. Uh, we got to clean it up. Is, is there a process for, are we going to wait or is it cleaned up? No, a absolutely. And, and this actually was an, was an item that was brought forth at a previous meeting here. Um, and this again is, is the former PAL trailer over at Nosotros Park in the west side of Calexico. Um, the work was dil diligently performed by our public works uh, department led by our public works manager Liliana Falomir. Um, in conjunction with our building department, uh, the proper permits uh, were looked at, were secured. Uh, the trailer has been removed um, and the area has been cleaned. Uh, so it's an unfortunate incident, um, but right now we should be thankful that our children and our residents in the west side don't have to be exposed uh, to the burned uh, trailer. Okay. That's all I have there. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, if I could just, uh, again, I, I went back and it looks really nice, really clean, but um, you know, the lights, the gate to that, the park is still open and the lights are off. So you go in, people can go in, you know, drive in or uh, walk around and, uh, you know, that, that's really dark in there, in that area, that park. So you can just look into that, whether addressing that, uh, closing the gate or, or turning on the lights. Appreciate it. Okay. Now I would like to make a mind. And thank you, uh, Supervisor Escobar, for um, being here with us today, um, addressing our concerns about the border and I will add on that we will continue having monthly meetings with uh, CBP, along with the uh, uh, Pro Mayor Con uh, Ryzen. Also, um, I would like to also make an announcement. It, it's kind of a sad announcement that we have our police hearing officer, Iran Martinez, oh, yes. passed away. And yes. it is, um, I sincerely give out my condolences yes. and prayers to the family. Yes. And um, moving on, I guess we go on to consent agenda. No. You and wish to say something, Were city you manager? Say something? No. no. Okay. Okay. okay <laughs> Throw us off on that. Agenda. Uh, okay, Madam Mayor, I would like to make a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda item, which consists of warrants, items number four, five, six, and then the application for alcoholic beverage license, uh, item number seven. Also, number eight has been added. To oh, that's the right. Consent agenda. Yeah, which is the Perfect. Perfect. sign up at the library. Yes. Yes, which is a good cause. I second it. Mayor. Mayor Adriana Fernandez. Aye. Mayor Pritam Aye. Councilmember Pacheco. Aye. Councilmember Garcia. Aye. Councilmember Hodge. Aye. Motion passed. 
Discussion of potential action items. Number eight, approval of reclassification of one library assistant, two employee to library technician, effective retroactively to July 1st, 2020. Madam Mayor, sorry, sorry to have thrown you off. I just like to be ready for the next thing that I know that we're going to be touching on. So we'll be getting accustomed to yeah. just my way of yeah. oh, okay. That's fine. handling business. That's fine. <laughs> Quick. Um, <laughs> Quick. Right. Um, so uh, for this item, uh, there, there is something that I do want to point out. Um, I, I want to make sure that this is um, the expectation when it comes to uh, employees that for whatever determination happens in departments, sometimes departments get split, sometimes departments get reorganized, and we need to address certain situations. Um, in this case, uh, I do want to uh, point out uh, the process that was followed. And in my eyes, it's the proper process that should always be done. Um, that is, um, a per, uh, an analysis was done with regards to an employee that has been uh, a diligent worker for the city for several years. Uh, as your staff report reads, um, the request that's in front of you is to make this library assistant number two position employee into a library technician. The employee at hand already has been performing some of the duties of a library technician. Um, this is something that was done in conjunction through our uh, library manager, Ms. Lisette Legaspi, and our HR manager, Ms. Denise Garcia. Uh, the proper process was followed. At the end of the day, we're looking out for the best interest of our staff member. And by that, um, the proper thing to do is to bring the item to your attention for consideration as a reclassification. Um, in, 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 in itself, um, we're looking out for the staff member and uh, that is something that should always be a priority. Um, in past evaluations, the employee has shown uh, to perform his duties at the level uh, expected by their respective supervisor. So with that in hand, um, this is where the request is coming from, the process that was followed, and why we feel that this is the right thing to do for the staff member. Well, I, I totally agree and I, I respect the the procedure that you're doing city manager Figueroa and if I just with all respect just say his first name Julio is is a great worker and, and very competent he deserves this so uh, if there aren't any other questions or insights I'll make a motion to approve item number eight which is approve the reclassification of one library assistant two employee to a library technician effective retroactively to July 1st, 2020. Do I have a second? Second. Mayor Riola Fernandez? Aye. Mayor Pichan Aye. Council Member Pacheco? Aye. Council Member Garcia? Aye. Council Member Hodge? Aye. Nine, award the bid proposal for Hazard Construction Company in the amount of four million four million six hundred twenty nine nine four forty three and twenty cents. What is it? Thousand? I mean, uh, that's twenty cents, I believe, at the end of it. Four million six hundred twenty-nine thousand nine hundred forty-three and twenty. Yeah, there, there we go. An authorized city manager to sign construction agreement for street improvement project asphalt rubber composite lay, layer overlay on designated streets project number twenty twenty two five hundred. Yes, Madam Mayor, um, the council and the members of the community should be familiar with this item because not too long ago on June 26th, we brought it to your attention so we could approve the actual streets that would be uh, taken care of in this fiscal year. Um, what happened um, as a result of that uh, is that uh, the bids um, for the 2020 Street Improvement Project uh, were received. Um, as we know, there are a total of 58 uh, streets uh, that will be resurfaced. Um, on July 21st, um, the bid closed. Uh, we received three um, proposals. As a result of that, Hazard Construction was the lowest bidder. 
in the amount of four million six hundred twenty nine thousand nine hundred forty three dollars with twenty cents uh, as we know the funding for this project will come from the Imperial County Local Transportation Authority sales tax revenue bond um, this is obviously something that this council has been looking at for the past years on an annual basis this program has been adopted in this case the recommendation is going uh, to uh, hazard construction from staff as they were the lowest bidder in this process. Any questions? Um, is there a reason why we don't have the list numbered or, or maybe uh, and, and knowing in what order and, and, and then relatively what timeline? Uh, or, or we just, as time goes on, we, we just focus on the one that comes up as a priority, or what, what's are, the situation? Are you referring there? to the street, Mr. Hodge? Yeah, the, street. the streets, okay. the listing. So, it's just the um, plain listing. Mm -hmm. So, so on, on, and when, when initially uh, the item got presented in terms of the, of the streets that would be. Uh, resurfaced, resurfaced in this year, mm -hmm. our public works manager shared with us that there's a process that's followed. Um, and the process is that we do an analysis as to when was the last time that these streets were actually uh, resurfaced. And also we do an assessment on the current state of the streets. So based on that combination, uh, it is determined which streets will be covered. Uh, we understand that um, these 58 streets may not be the only ones that meet that threshold, but given the resources available at this time for this fiscal year, these are the ones that we can cover. It doesn't take away that the other streets that have been assessed will be considered so, for next year. Okay, so they're ordered, so I'm assumed to assume that Palm Drive to Imperial Avenue East will be the first project. Um, to, to speci I understand what you're asking for. Do, do you, you want to know specifically which streets are first going to be? Right, if we um, could uh, have that we, we could, we could certainly We can certainly provide that schedule once that's um, determined uh, yeah. through the contractor that we're going to be working with. Okay. Yeah, they're grouped by in neighborhoods. All these streets are like, you know, targeted. We, we, we can definitely provide a status report as progress is being made. Uh, Councilman Hodge at this forum. Mm -hmm. So we know which are the ones that have been covered and worked on. Okay, that's good. Yeah, this these projects are great. Our city looks looks neater, and our and our our, our community realizes that we're we're working for them. So these streets need to be yeah. redone. This is positive for this the community. Is a, this is an excellent. Uh, these are excellent projects. Yes. Okay, I'll make a motion to, uh, if there aren't any questions, to approve agenda item number nine. Do I have a second? No second. Okay. Mayor Adriana Fernandez? Aye. Mayor Pretend Bryson? Aye. Councilmember Pacheco? Aye. Councilmember Garcia? Aye. Councilmember Hodge? Aye. Motion passes. Aye. Aye. Moving on to item 10. Authorize city manager to purchase and install PAXTRS aeration system for the east side water reserve from utility service company industries in the amount of two hundred and twelve thousand five hundred and eighty eight. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I, I do want to commend uh, our public works department on this item one because it's an item that's part of our overall capital improvement program um, I also want to emphasize uh, that uh, for the past several months dating back to 2019 a substantial amount of work has been put into this um, element of the overall plan and I do want to emphasize that the state water quality control board is the state agency that oversees um, that any improvement system that gets considered um, is obviously approved within their standards. With that said, our staff has been working very closely with the State Water Board to make sure that not only this 
component of our overall plan, but the other components that are derived to, through the overall um, water and wastewater improvement um, uh, projects that we're going to be bringing to your attention um, are not only the proper ones that need to be um, uh, occurring in our city, given the system that we have, but also that they meet all the requirements um, that need to be met. Uh, so with that said, uh, the system that we have here in front of you for consideration is going to be something that um, pretty much addresses um, uh, one of the things that we've um, seen lately um, through our water bills. This has to do with the quarterly uh, reporting that happens on the state of the water quality in our city. Uh, for that, as part of the notice that we issue through our water bill, uh, we see that there are four locations in Colexico that get tested. Um, and again, uh, this test uh, measures uh, the levels of uh, what we now have come accustomed uh, to call THM, which is uh, trihalothamine, which in a way uh, me measures uh, the water quality standards that the state imposes on, on all jurisdictions. Uh, with that said, what we've come to know is that one of the sampling stations has um, uh, come across a water quality that's above uh, the threshold. One of the things that we like to emphasize, as we noted in the notice, is that there are certain precautions that our community should be aware of, but also at the same time certain things that should not be concerns at this point, yeah. uh, given the measurements uh, that we have been receiving. Uh, with that said, uh, what this um, uh, system, this aeration system will do, it's going to be a two-phase uh, uh, process. Both uh, of the work will be done on our east side tank uh, reservoir that we have, uh, based on the experts, which is our staff at the water department. Um, we have been informed that uh, the first phase should automatically address some of the water quality uh, issues that have surfaced. Um, that initial uh, phase should take around up to three months. After that phase two, it's actually going to be something that's going to be a little bit more comprehensive in which our tank is actually going to have to be emptied so the proper work can be done inside of the tank. Obviously, when we come to that, we will give proper notice and doing, and we will properly schedule so we don't um, affect at all um, the services that our community receives. Again, I want to emphasize this is part of our capital improvement program. Um, the work that had begun since 2019 is now something that we can bring to you as a result of us working with the State Water Board, and we're looking uh, for your consideration uh, to proceed and implement something that we have right now here for your consideration. Uh, if I may interject, I think it's important to reiterate that it does say the testing results show that our water system exceeds the standard or maximum containment level, but that the public is not at an immediate risk. So there is no need to, to be overly concerned or panic or, is that correct? That is, that is correct. And, and again, um, uh, we, we, we need to uh, commend the, the, the staff that's been Very working good. diligently on a, on a daily basis to make sure that we are meeting as a city all the requirements in order to proceed for, uh, for a, a project of, of, of this type um, for our um, water system. And in your discussion, you had said that the first phase will take care of the, the problem of the contamination, correct? What we anticipate that with the, with the work that's gonna go as part of phase one, um, some of the um, high levels that particularly we've seen in one of the site uh, uh, testing locations uh, will cease to come down under the state water quality threshold. Good. Okay. What irritated me was that we had people in the community stating that you need to boil the water, uh, uh, this contamination is, is, is here, uh, let me get the direct quote, do not drink or cook with tap water. Please share to help spread the information to our <laughs> fellow Calexicans. At never at one point were we at a state where the water or that we were consuming or bathing or cooking was in danger. And this is what kind of irritates me that people get 
uh, a notice and they want to throw it out there and then they excite our, our citizens and it's not true. It's just not true. What, that, what, uh, what, what, that's, you're right on point, Mr. Pacheco, and, and this is something that US EPA and the State Water Research Control Board uh, have determined um, as tier two or tier one violations. Uh, pretty much that's, that's, that's the way it's, it's handled. Um, and a tier two violation is less urgent than a tier one. Tier one is possibly when boil, uh, water boiling notices get issued. That was not the case in Calexico. Uh, w one of the things that I do want to um, bring up and let the, the council know in our community is that um, it also uh, can benefit um, that us as a city, besides doing our due diligence and informing the people through their water bill in the form of a notice, that we also use our platforms that we have right now to possibly disseminate information in a different way. Uh, so it can be clear and we can all be on the same understanding of what this entails. And that is something that um, as staff members, um, uh, we will be looking at to make sure that for future occasions, regardless of the item that we have at hand that has to do with community services that we offer, that we find different ways to communicate. Um, that way, um, like Mr. Pacheco rightfully mentions, we can possibly avoid some misunderstanding. Um, and, and that way, um, we, we all can be a, a little better uh, informed of, of, of what this entails. Because sometimes um, some of these items can be highly technical. Um, so we want to make sure that we properly provide the information so right. it can be clear in, for all of us. In simple terms. Okay. Any more questions? Not for me, Madam Mayor. Okay, now do we have a motion? Make a motion to approve this item. Second. I'll second it. Mayor Adriela Fernandez. Aye. Mayor Pretend Bryson. Aye. Councilmember Pacheco. Aye. Councilmember Garcia. Aye. Councilmember Hodge. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Moving on. Item 11 consideration of contract for IBC work study program for, year, for fiscal year 2020 to 21. This is a program, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, that our library here in Calexico has been doing with IVC, our local community college, for some time. Um, as most of you um, have shared with me, you have come to know some people that have actually benefited from this work study program. One of the things that I want to share with you is that the city of Calexico's share uh, for the program, which represents 35%, is already included in our uh, annual budget. Okay. Um, also, what I want to share is that uh, through uh, the leadership of our library manager, Lisette Legaspi, uh, we provide uh, a younger generation the opportunity to come familiar with what general office work is, uh, with library activities, um, with adult uh, literacy programs, even traffic control and recreational activities. So there's a, a spectrum of opportunities that we offer through this program. Again, it's a benefit, it's a win-win for the community college, for the city, and for the community. Yeah. Okay. Good questions? for kids, it puts them to work and, and they gain a lot of experience and they're making a little money and- uh, It's a good thing. We just share a little bit of the cost, but it's a, it's, it's a good program. Positive. Okay, I'll make a motion to authorize the city manager to sign the contract with the Imperial Valley College Work Study Program. Have a second. Second. Pretend, uh, Mayor Arola Fernandez. Aye. Mayor Pretend Friesen. Aye. Council Member Pacheco. Aye. Council Member Garcia. Aye. Council Member Hodge. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Uh, moving on to item 12, Mayor's appointment to the Imperial Valley Southern Border Committee. Aye. Mr. Pacheco, would you do us the honor? Yes, I will uh, gladly uh, be part of this committee if so, so, so chosen. Yeah, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And if, if I may add, Madam Mayor, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Reisen, uh, this is an effort uh, led by Supervisor uh, Jesus Mr. Escobar Man. to try and bring, um, as you can see here from your staff report, representatives from different agencies in Calexico to the table 
so we can all communicate and uh, find solutions to some of the issues, concerns, and problems that our community um, deals with on a daily basis. Supervisor Escobar, have you considered alternates or is it necessary or not necessary? Can I go yeah, oh, yes. if you'd like to. Could you share this couple of work too? How about you share this couple of work at the committee? Yes. <laughs> it's a very good idea. was uh, um, approved by the County Board of Supervisors several months ago. Unfortunately, right, right, uh, before, right after it was approved, our pandemic hit uh, in March. I was hoping that by July or August, this pandemic would be gone and we were back to normal. But uh, as we can see, we're not back to normal. I didn't want to kick the can, so to speak, until the pandemic is over because who knows when it will be over. And I think there's pressing issues uh, that we can deal with at a, at a more of a regional uh, level. As you can see, I'm assuming they have the information. Uh, as you can see on the list of, of invitees, it's basically elected local elected officials that represent Calexico. If you look at the ID, it's our current uh, ID director. Uh, thank you. ID director uh, Ortega, uh, Heffernan, uh, the school district, myself, obviously, a city council member, uh, at the time, you were assistant city manager, now you're city manager, Fieroa. And what we're trying to do here is build a consortium of local elected officials, along with some uh, individual members of our local business community, to work together as a team and bring about effective solutions to some of the problems that are plaguing Calexico. Uh, is that a catch-all? No, not necessarily, but at the end of the day, what we really wanted to, to do is be able to work together in cohesion within all the elected officials and all the elected bodies, along with the business community, and at the end of the day, try to make a positive difference in the livelihood of the city of Calexico and its community and its members. Well, if you ever Thank consider you. alternates, I'd be willing to. And, and I to. apologize, I went on my That's tangent. okay, no, did no. Not answer your question. It was good information. Uh, at, at this point, it's not that we're not considering alternates. It's that I wanna get our first meeting up and running. I see. Establish uh, and kind of get everybody going. Going. And, and again, we were trying to do this a lot sooner. COVID-19 hit. We had to take a step okay. back, and now we're going to try to hit the 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 the, uh, uh, the road where the rubber meets the road. Let's see. Right. Let's start uh, working on solutions for for our. Industry. All right. Very and, good. And definitely, we'll, we'll look at alternates, not just for the city of Calexico, but for all elected officials within this uh, committee. Understood. Thank uh, you. I I just want to say that this is by far one of the best approaches that I. I can see, you know, a, a city in a region or city integrating with a, a region. Uh, I think this is a very comprehensive uh, group of stakeholders, uh, local stakeholders, and it's very comprehensive. And I think, you know, this this should uh, yield some great work. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, you know, as Mr. Uh, you know Hodge, you know, stated, you know, hopefully alternates or just being able to have these meetings, uh, whereas maybe well, probably right now you're going to do Zoom or whatever, but when they, we go back to some normalcy, having an open forum so we can invite the community, community forums, that type of thing, because I mean, I always said that, you know, all of these parties here need to be at the table to have these conversations, to create, you know, a, a plan, you know, a, a, a vision. Um, and I think it, it's just great. It's, it's, it's a great uh, project. It's a great committee that I'm, I'm really excited to see the final is coming to fruition. So. Congratulations for that for that uh, that idea and this vision. Well, thank so. you again. Now, now we need to kind of put the put the let, let's move forward on this. But I appreciate the kudos no. and and actually we were thinking about we'll Zoom. Uh, our meeting is scheduled for next Wednesday at this location. Oh. Gabby, correct me if I'm wrong. At 6 p.m. Oh. Five, six. I think at 6 p.m. here next Wednesday. Oh. Uh, it is open to the public because it is a public meeting. Okay. Uh, obviously, we have to practice social distancing, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll let Gabby and uh, Mr. Figueroa figure out the details in that regard because, again, it, it, even though I love Calexico, I, I'll leave it to you guys to, to handle the logistics and make sure that it's a safe meeting for everybody. But, again, I appreciate the kudos, and now let's, 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 let's make a difference. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have, uh, does anybody 
have anything for our next meeting I'd like to add into to the agenda? Mr. Do we need a vote on this? Yeah, we need to. Uh, so I make a motion to uh, uh, appoint Mr. Uh, Pacheco to this committee. I'll second that. Mayor Ariela Fernandez. Aye. Mayor Bridget Bryson. Councilmember Pacheco. Aye. Councilmember Garcia. Aye. Councilmember Hodge. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Aye, aye. Okay, moving on. Do we have anything for our next meeting? Would you like anything on our agenda, Mr. Garcia? Um, just, uh, I just wanted to, I, I'm always kind of like thinking about um, being able to help our people and being able to um, also um, uh, you know, w with this IBC contract that we just approved, the work, uh, work study, you know, also in the future, you know, it doesn't have to be now due to our current conditions. If we can look into maybe establishing some sort of volunteer program, I know that's a, uh, I'm looking at uh, <laughs> Denise back there, but uh, I, I think, you know, there are a lot of uh, community members that would love to volunteer, that would love to help. But I know that there's some also some other things that need to be taken care of. Risk management, <laughs> that's a big thing. But if we can start looking, you know, we can start thinking about how we can make this work. You know, I think we have a lot of community members that would love to be able to help us out. So whatever hope we can get, um, I would love to see something come forward, uh, come before us, uh, this, this council, uh, mm -hmm. some sort of volunteer program or something that's where we can idea. invite our, our, our public, our citizens to, to participate. Right. That's a good idea. Uh, no, I just want to piggyback on that. Like, for instance, graffiti abatement. That's one area that we could get volunteers, among many others. So I, I concur with that. I have no future agenda items. Mr. Pacheco? No, it's kind of dark in the cities that drive around, Mr. Figueroa. We've got to either put candles out there or <laughs> something. I, I want to th thank you for bringing that item up, and I'll be brief, but I, I, I do want to... Uh, say that that's something that we've been talking about. Our public works department is moving as fast as, as we can. Um, again, I, I don't like to talk about the limitations that we have, but trust uh, in, in, in our staff that uh, they, they know, they take the notes. Uh, Ms. Falomir gets several, several emails from me on a weekly basis with items that need to be addressed out in our community. And, and she does follow up not only with emails, but with pictures. Uh, to let me know that things are getting done, and, and I appreciate that. Um, also, I, I do want to point out that we're going to be also working. Uh, the other day, we had the chance to go and do a little drive around. I, I took a couple of the department heads, and uh, the, the police chief uh, brought up a practice um, that will definitely be of use, and that is whenever we have our police officers uh, driving uh, at night, at the hours where we don't have a lot of people out on the street, um, they're going to give us a hand by making sure that they, if they see a, a light that's out, they'll make a note of it, and that way we can have an inventory of whatever it is they pick up. We would follow the process, share it with Public Works, but we at least know and have a better understanding of the inventory of lights that are out in our city. Thank you. Mr. Rison? Okay, I guess uh, this meeting, I call this meeting is adjourned? Yes. Thank you. Thank you.